What up? Hello. Welcome. Today I'm going to be refining the Kusanagi. She's the thief boss. The optional boss in Songbringer. Okay, what I just fixed actually was these ghost pillars. That was pretty fun. Um, in Swordless Runs, the ghost pillars... What's up, Teak? Oh, Teak, you'll be interested in this. The ghost pillars now um, are vulnerable to the top hat if you don't have the sword. And you have the ghost pillar. Or you have the ghost sword. How you been, man? What's up? Dom and Killer, what's up? So these things, right? If you if you're actually doing a swordless run, you don't have the sword, you're not you're intentionally not picking up the sword. These ghost pillar pillar blocks were impossible to cross because like you couldn't get you didn't have the sword. So now if you get the ghost sword and you don't have the sword at all, your top hat will actually be able to get rid of those. So that'll help out swordless runs. It's going really good, man. Great, great. How about you? What's new? Oh, I forgot. Oh. Hollow Knight, I'm I was supposed to get Hollow Knight. Is it still on sale? You're exhausted? Oh man, you guys, your sister got married? Congratulations, sir. Oh sweet, we still have, yes! It's still on sale. Yay, I can save five dollars. I heard this game's amazing. Um, actually, I heard it from the guys uh, at PC Gamer. So I got to be on the PC Gamer podcast. Um, I'll share a link to that in case anybody's interested in that. You're watching this YouTube or whatever. Um, Twitter. Here we go. All right, that's the PlayStation article. There's been a lot to share lately. Here we go. This is the link. This has got to be the link right here. Nice. You got <laughs> Rip Wallet. I love that. <laughs> Mad Max, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, or in the Blind Forest. Whoa, you got it for only seven pounds. Tales of the Bo from the Borderlands, Metro Redux. I gotta check some of these out. But yeah, I heard from these guys at the PC Gamer. I was on their podcast and um, they did this. It's also a live stream. And uh, they recommended Hollow Knight, so I gotta get Hollow Knight. I gotta like put a link on my desktop so I can buy this after the stream. What's up, Pedro? Machado glitch. Hello. Yeah, I'm streaming. This is actually the 580. What is this? Five. It's a lot of streams so far. What's up, Biter Kid? Okay, so tell me more about these. Um, what should I be looking for? Where's that? Where's that link you sent? Howdy, howdy, howdy! Here, let's put this here. Go up here. Go here. Middle Earth: Shadow of Mordor. Oh, that's the new Middle Earth. Is that the old Middle Earth game? Which game is that? You got Ori. Nice. I'm glad some people got Ori. 
If anybody on the stream isn't hasn't gotten Hyperlight Drifter or Axiom Verge, those are also like both 50% off, I think. Classics. Whoa. Dang, this is a great deal. This is like a triple A game. Look at this, dang. How long is the gameplay on this? Oh, this is from 2014? I am not up to date on my my AAA games. Or it looks like a AAA game, maybe it's not. I don't know. Wow, yeah, this, this is a crazy crazy cool deal. You got Ori, Tales from the Borderlands. Yeah, everybody got nice new games, and I got, what's this one? It's hurting my wallet so much. You want any games? Right. Oh, dang. Oh, this one. Right, right. This looks really good. Dang, I gotta get this one, I think. <laughs> wow, cool. Great recommendations here. Uh, my wallet's about to hurt, too. Yeah, you made money instead of lost money? Bam! Nice job, Teak. Swarmonian Explorer. Oh, yeah? Well, so wait, wait. So did you like this game or you did not like this game? It's only two dollars. Interesting. This got some unique concepts. Oh, it's a classic roguelike. Whoa, dang, 23 hours in that game? So is this do you recommend this or or not? Oh, this is from 2012. Dang. And then Metro Redux bundle. So you get this and that. Oh, this is a first person shooter. Yeah, cool. Some great art. This too, dang. Sweet, if you like old school roguelikes, right on. I get, I don't know. I guess it depends on the roguelike. The the old school ones I think appeal to me more than um I don't know, I love that old school aesthetic. Dang, this is some rad art too. This is like incredible. How much is this going for? This is only eight bucks. So tell me about this. Like, is there like a trend or is or what? How how is it that some games that are tr like triple A quality art are only going for twenty dollars versus the standard like sixty? Like, what what is it about this game? Why are they selling it so much? for so much less.
So you recommend FTR? Oh, right, right. Right, that's what I'm wondering. Like, is this game shorter? Is there like a is this like a short version of a of a triple A game? Is that why they're selling it for like a third of the price? Okay, so what I'm gonna be working on today is the thief boss. So let's go to where the thief boss is. Twelve zero zero. I'm gonna need some get set up for this fight here. This is a difficult fight. Oh, Dungeon of the Endless, I got that one. And I think I got FTL as well in my library. I'm not sure if I've played it yet. I got a lot of games in my library I haven't played. I know they're great games. I've heard they're great games. I just haven't really had any time to play any games at all, except for Songbringer. Gotta gotta play Songbringer like with one. I play Songbringer about like once every ten days. It's really nice to just do a playthrough, sit back, vaporize some nice marijuana, and then just play. Okay, so I'm gonna keep these world seeds. We're going to go to position 12. We can have Jib for this fight. We're going to need the sword. Uh, we need to get set up for the, the thief boss fight. That's going to require playing it for really quick. And then we need the super bombs. Kill bombs. We got those. Okay, I think we're ready for this. Yeah, I played Dungeon of Endless. It's pretty good. Oh, good thing it's, this thing's already cracked. Why does it look so weird, though? Oh, it's got the color of the area. So that thing's already cracked. That's good. Totally. That's a really great one. I love the pixel art in it too. It's such good pixel art. Okay, the color of the sphere is kind of bugging me there. I just want to check it out. Sphere 1. I think it's create sphere tile. Yeah. Oh, okay. Dang, it's a 37 seven hour game. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So it's sphere big. It's got the color. Uh, it's going to be render, color type, rock. Let's turn that off. See what this looks like. It's like way cooler. Okay, let's see what it looks like with with the whole process happening, so Start with, um, I think it's Thief, yeah, Thief Zero. Okay, this is a spoiler alert though. If you don't want to know how to trigger the Thief boss. Okay, it does look kind of weird like that though. Ah, 
okay, so we want to change the color to be white when Oh yeah, right here. Basically, once it's cracked open, becomes white. And when it gets cracked open here, also needs to set the white color so it's just like gets totally radiant yeah so it's summer here summertime in california some people are going hiking some people are going swimming. Some people are just working. Oh, Kingdom? Nice. I got Kingdom, I think, in the last one. Another game, another great game I haven't played yet. Or at least I hope it's a great game. I've heard it's a great game. Can't wait to try it. Okay, so we need to have a few things equipped for this. That. Oops. It's weird. Oh, gosh. It gets me every time. So if I press left while I'm on the sword, it scrolls me back around. I kind of want to snap the movement of that. Anyways, let's equip that. Um, we got that, meditate. All right, I think we're ready for this. Let's save that. Start over. All right, so meditate. Let's see if this color switch happens nicely. Nice, that looks good actually. Yeah, way better than it did when it's um <laughs> when it's all colored all weird. It's colored weird because this area is sort of greenish. Pixotic, what's up man? Thank you. Thank you for saying that, man. I appreciate it. Whoa, man, this is some radical awesome art. How are you liking the gameplay so far? Sweet. This is actually actual game shots right here. With all this stuff on the edges and stuff. All right, now let's test it again from where it's already cracked open. <laughs> nice, nice. Cool. Okay, good. Now it's like brighter. It's like, it's not all subdued because it, before it had this green tint to that sphere and it just wrecked the whole p the pink, um, coming out of it. So now that, that art just looks so much better that way. Um, but now we're ready for this boss fight. So once again, this is a spoiler alert of how to, how to, how to enable the thief boss. So if you don't want to know, close your eyes. Oh no. 
You can't have jib for this. Jib, you can't be here for this fight. We either have to have nothing or Vel. I think we'll just have nothing because Vel doesn't help for this fight. Anyways. Okay, so, um, on to refining the thief boss. This is an optional boss in the game. And, um, yeah, so one of the designers from Double Eleven, he plays the game all the time. His name's Tom, he's really awesome. Um, he's always like submitting thoughts and stuff like that, you know, playing the game. He's played the game probably more than like anybody. Well, no, I guess there's probably some QA guys that probably played a lot more than he has because they, they're playing it all the time. But anyways, I'm really thankful to the team at Double Eleven and everything they do. And one of the things they do is play the game all the time, which helps give me so much perspective. This is such a giant game. There's so many hours of gameplay in this game that it's like, it's ridiculous for one person to try and tackle all of it or, or at least experience it all and provide enough feedback for it all. So man, having people play the game all the time is really, really helpful. And so anyways, Tom has always come up with these, with these great ideas, and this is a few of them. I'm going to work on refining the Thief Boss today with a few of his thoughts. So, let's work on that. Oh yeah, this boss is crazy hard. This is the one, this is, this boss is almost harder than, um, um, the final boss in some ways. It's really fun, yeah? When the car gang chases you around, you can destroy them. Cool. Grapple hook, tires. Sweet. Sounds like a, a rad game. Okay, yeah, so her her health is a little bit much. Even I'll admit that. You know, trying to, to beat this boss takes a long time. She takes so many hits, and you gotta constantly... You, have to, you barely win, even with, like, a flask. You barely win with, like, two flasks, even. You're like, what? So. Just to adjust her, let's get, um, her profile open. All right, oh, this is the thief. We want the thief boss. Okay, thief boss. First of all, her health is at 99. That's all she has. Why is she so freaking hard? What does Metatron have? Metatron is 350. But why is it that she... Okay, I guess because she, invi she's invisible the whole time. But she doesn't have any armor or anything. Oh, her invincible duration is 0.5. Okay, so that's kind of like armor in the sense that your glove doesn't do much against her. Because she's invincible for a whole half second. Okay, that, that explains it. So anyways, if I lower her health a little bit, let's think about how much to lower her health by. Uh, I've previously fought this boss many times, and gosh, the fight goes on for like a few minutes. Like, I, I think it could stand to lose. She could lose like 15 to 20% of her health, and it would still be about the same fight. Let's start with 15%, kind of like on the safer side whoa a final fantasy 15 a whole a fight that took the whole in-game day yeah yeah you're totally right there are some there are some times where a really long battle can be awesome um but in this case i think shortening this thief boss fight actually is okay because um, there's really not that much variety to her to her attacks. She's got kind of like she's like a she her main thing is that she turns invisible, right? And so fighting her is mostly like this invisible fight against nothing. You're like, where the heck is she? If you pay attention, you can see her footprints, but like other than that, she's hard to find. So it's kind of like a shtick almost to this boss fight. There's a trick to it, and like. This is not really one of those ones where you want this fight to drag on too long. 
you know. Cool. Wow. I got to check that out too. Okay, so 15% of 99 is going to be like 15, so 84, 85. 85 actually is a nice number because that's like something significant when you divide it by 255. Yeah, it's a third. It's a third of 255. I like that number. We're going to go with 85 for her health. That's lowering her health by about 15%, which ought to like. If the fight, if the fight was like five minutes long, which is that's that's pretty long. But anyways, if it was five minutes long, that's getting the fight down to 255 because it shaves off 45 seconds. All right, now um, there's she gets stuck in her. Um, well, she she does the bombs a lot, but that's depending on how far away she is. Okay, so she goes into sequence bomb A, and she does get stuck in it because you're she's meant to she's meant to do the bombs a certain number of times, but. Maybe there's something we can do to make her so she like seeks out the player a little bit more rather than doing the bombs too much. I think I think she does have something where she tries this search for the player. Here it is. She pathfinds. Yeah, she pathfinds if the target is far enough away. But does she ever just like move towards the, the hero? She cloaks. She goes into magic A. Let's like watch her AI actually a little bit actually. Turn on render verbosity to two so we can see what she's doing. Okay, she's in initial cloak. Pathfind follow, follow path. Okay, so she is using her pathfinding to move all the time. Okay, and she does get into bombs a bit too much. Like she just, it'd be nicer if she kind of had a timer maybe where she, after she bombed, maybe there's like a timer for like five to 15 seconds almost where she just tries to attack you so she doesn't do her bombs again for a little while. That would probably be a way to balance out this AI. Okay, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Would you say there's any significant benefits to picking up C++ over C Sharp? Yes, I would. Or switching to C++. If you're already familiar with C Sharp, well, that's a different thing. Um, if you're already familiar with C++, one second. <laughs> so if you're already familiar with C Sharp, that's a huge benefit for you 
um, and will be a huge time saver in making games. So it kind of depends on your own goals, right? Do you want to make a game or do you just want to learn to program or do you, what is it that you really want? You know what I mean? If you really just want to learn right now or you just want to learn languages, then learn them both, man. Have fun learning. Um, but if you want to like actually make a game, then it kind of depends on what kind of game you want to make. Do you want to make a long form game that takes you years to make? Or do you want to make something really quick, like in a, in a game jam over a weekend? Or do you want to make something short form where it takes you like three months to make the game? Um, and the answer to that is if you're going for that long form game, there are some significant, I think, advantages to get switching to C++ in the long term. Um, but then again, there's going to be better languages than C++ pretty soon. We'll have Jai from Jonathan Blow, and that will pretty much be worth switching from C++, I think. <clears throat> but anyways, sorry for the long-ass answer there. Did I help? Mr. Frenick, what's up, man? Bro, Jay Simpson. Uh, how many musical instruments can I actually play? All of them! What do you mean? No, I can't. I can't play. I'm really bad at like uh, the wind instruments, the ones that, like saxophones and stuff, and clarinets and flutes. I'm really bad at those. Um, but I love guitars, and I love singing, and I love drumming. You're programming already. Cool. You want to transition into games? Games dev. Right on. You've been dabbling in your spare time with Unity. Okay. Oh, you just don't have a good sense of the pros cons for C++. Well. Let's put it this way. Um, I guess if you wanted to do C++, you could you could switch to Unreal um, instead of Unity. But in some senses, if you're using Unity or Unreal, you don't really need to learn programming languages that much anymore. I mean, you could well, you already know C Sharp, so you could do Unity and C Sharp, and you're done, man. So this, if you're just dabbling with game dev, stick to that. I would recommend. Stick to Unity, man. It's really great. And you already know C Sharp. So really, what's the point of learning anything else? Um, if you're just like kind of like transitioning into it, you know? But long term, the advantages of C++ are this. C++ is faster than C Sharp by a hair. It's not too much faster, but in, there's some definite performance advantages to C++. Um, C++ is far more portable. So you're going to be able to transition your C++ game code to other platforms easier. So if you're writing a game in C++, you can easily port it to like PlayStation or Xbox One or um, Android devices or anything. You know, it's like you can you can use C++ on everything. You can't use C Sharp on everything. <clears throat> That's a big advantage. So speed and portability, I think, are two of the biggest advantages of C++. And it's just ubiquity. It's everywhere. Every every single library is written in C++ in some form. Like everything you would need as a game developer. Us game developers, we've been making games in C++ for a long time. So there's like a lot of it. There's a lot of C++ code already for games. What am I working on today? Um, I'm working on the thief boss, refining her. Yeah, no garbage collecting, which is a huge pro in my mind, and it's also a minus to some people, so it's a, it's a pro or a con, depending on how you look at it. Oh, they see, you think that's a pro, nice, I agree. I totally agree. And why we agree, um, for anyone that's wondering, and like paying attention to this programming, what's the point of garbage collecting? Garbage collecting is something where you uh, don't even manage your own memory, so basically you allocate stuff from your memory, like I want this much, these many bytes, for this much data, right? You say, I want that. And then um, later you're just like, eh, I don't really want it anymore, but I'm not gonna say anything to the system or whatever. I'm just gonna let the system clean it up. So the system goes and clean is, cleans up your garbage for you. And what's bad about that is your game can have these huge hiccups. Like um, you're like, whoops, oh, they're just 10, 100 whole milliseconds went by because the garbage collector just kicked in. So. That said, in C Sharp, you use a garbage collector by default or something like that. I'm not sure because I don't use C Sharp, but there's a garbage collector there that runs for you sometimes. And you got to be really careful if you're writing C Sharp code to do your memory management yourself. I think that's the that's the crux of it. 
um, or else you get these hiccups where it's just the garbage collector is kicking in. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe they improved it, maybe that's not even an issue anymore or something in C-sharp and or Unity. I'm not sure what exactly is that hiccup. But anyways, C++, you uh, have to do your memory management pretty much yourself unless you're writing your own garbage collector. And what's great about that is it forces you as a programmer to just be you know, conscious of your usage of memory. And when you're done with something, just let it go, release it, deallocate it, free it. Free it back to the heat, my man, let it fly. If it loves you, it'll come back. You know it will. Okay, so what I'm doing here is the thief boss, she spams bombs a lot because she doesn't have any kind of timer or whatever. So, but the, the thing is, uh, she's already got the timer set to zero. Huh. Okay, I gotta look at every single instance of her usage of the timer. So she starts off, she gets timer zero. When she does magic, she gets timer zero. When she does bombs, oh, she does do timer at the end. Oh. Okay, maybe the timer is just not long enough then. Because she can always do melee. She can always pathfind. Oh. Okay. So, when she's done with her bombs, she needs not just 6 to 9 seconds. Let's do a whole like 16 to 19 seconds. So, adding in 10 whole seconds. Oh, yeah, totally, man. What, poet, philosopher? How, how did you know I'm a poet and a philosopher, huh? It's great. <laughs> aren't we all? Aren't we all poets and philosophers? I don't know. I think I think code in itself is kind of a poetry. Streamer, streamer, right? Streamer. Um, I'm a bringer. I'm bringing you some laughs. I'm bringing you some entertainment. Uh, I'm a meditator. I like to meditate. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a liver, man. I'm living life. Let's do a smaller window today. Oops, wait, not this one. Yeah, here we go. Windows size 1080p today because my computer's chugging. Chugging away, trying to do this stream. It's like, man, you're putting so much weight on me. I'm sorry, computer, you can do it. You got it. Have you guys ever wondered if, like, you just threw uh, a bunch of atoms that a laptop was made of into random space? Like, how many trillions of years would it take for those atoms to suddenly, somehow, maybe not even suddenly, Maybe gradually just like coalesce into a laptop, like <laughs> a really nice laptop that worked perfectly. Like how long would it take entropy to figure that out? You know what I mean? How many trillions of years would, would the right number, would the right atoms take to become a laptop? I would love to see that. You know what I mean? You're sitting out in space in one, one year, finally, Finally, a laptop appears in the middle of space, and you're like, yes! It's about time I got my MacBook Pro! <laughs> so I ordered it 500 trillion years ago! For five days? That's pretty fast. What universe is that? Okay, so she should be trying to, like, attack me a lot. Follow path, follow path. Okay, so now she can do bombs. See what happens after, okay? One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is better. Okay, so she's got a whole 10 second window where she's just trying to chase you and she's not really spamming the bombs as much. Let's make sure she gets back right about now. She should be able to use her bombs again. She's not using her- oh there, she's used her bombs finally. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Frenick. Appreciate that. Okay, this is good. I like this so far. So basically what we've done is she lowered her health a little bit, 15%. So the boss fight, this boss fight, is, it, was, it was so long. This was like one of the longest boss fights because you can't hit her twice because she's got this invincibility duration and basically it just, she's basically kind of got like almost armor sense that she's really really strong she's super fast she's invulnerable sometimes this is just like a crazy fight she's invincible so she doesn't spam bombs as much so far and her health what else was there here increase her approach speed after she gets down to half health that's gonna be hard it's gonna make her harder but let's see how that feels so when she's Following her path, she can move faster if she's at low health. If path finds, stop, bounce, update, target, follow path. There we go. For, she's following her path. She's trying to get towards you. Target's 20 way. Dur path, not if invincible. Yeah, so we'll set up a succeed element. So if she has her hit points less than half, Right, or let's do, since this is probably gonna make her a lot more difficult, I'm gonna make it so it's when your health gets a, a third. If her hit points are less than a third, then set her speed to 1.2. Actually, we'll make this a select. So this always reasserts. Select sequence. So it's always setting the speed to something. If if not 1.2, she set, sets her speed to 1.0. In fact, let's make this crazy exaggerated so we know that this definitely happens. So it's gonna double her speed when she gets low on health. Whoops, yeah, meditate, that's perfect block all the damage. Whoa, can you meditate for this boss fight? No, can't meditate for this boss fight. You can meditate for in the, in the final boss though. Makes it a crazy different fight. Okay, so follow path. All right, so get her health down to a quarter. Hit her twice with um, kill all. 288, 276, gotta get her down, her health is at 340, she needs to be at 85 or less hit points, dang, this is why she's so crazy hard. There we go. Okay. So she's... Oh wow. Yeah, she's crazy fast like that. Oh, I gotta like it. Probably a little less fast. Can you tell you about your experience with publishing my game? Sure, man. Um, I kind of had so I'll tell you I'll tell you the story from the start. Um, 
it starts with my last game. So my last game was a game called Hero Bash. I made it with my friend, and um, he did all the art and the design, and I did the programming and the music. And for Hero Bash, it was a it was an iOS MOBA. Um, so we were kind of like trying to jump into doing an eSport, basically eSports game with a lot of competition. And besides, what we what we failed to do was market our game ourselves from, you know, we didn't build a following or that's actually really more of what we didn't do. We didn't build a following at all. It doesn't matter how you, how you market, as long as you're building a following somehow for your game, you know, along the way, I think that's, a, that's what you need to do is if you're hiding what you're creating, you're not building a following. You know, you can, you can try and like protect yourself from other people trying to steal your ideas or whatever, or, you can open yourself up and be vulnerable and share what you're creating and possibly have a success with your game. You know what I mean? So my, my theory is at this point, from, from learning my lessons for the last game, we basically failed um, to build a following. So we didn't, because we didn't, we didn't actually try and build a following. Um, our game kind of failed at launch. We spent some money on PR, um, but that didn't help, you know, because there was really no one aware of our, our multiplayer game. That's even a multiplayer game is something you should definitely have built a following around um, because you got to get a lot of people playing it or else a multiplayer game just it tanks and our game tanked and it really kind of bummed me out there for a minute, but it taught me one of the most important lessons I've ever learned. And so I'll, if I were to trade it for anything else, I wouldn't, you know, it was one of the best lessons of my entire life is that two years of my life I spent writing Hero Bash and having it fail. Um, so what it, what it taught me to do is basically I need to create a following for publishing my game, right? You need to create a following somehow. So my goal was, all right, I'm going to explore the certain um, social medias and find ones that work for me and then just stay with those social media accounts the whole way through the project. And so I tried some things out and I realized I liked Twitter. I was like, dude, Twitter's cool. There's a lot of other game developers on here saying stuff. And what's great about Twitter is that when you post something, other people get it. You know, it's not like Facebook where you people might see what you post if you have enough, if you're popular enough, you know. Um, so that's what I love about Twitter is like who you're following is, is you're going to see what they post, you know, not, not just what the algorithm thinks you should like or whatever. But anyways, I liked. Um, I also like Twitch. I'm here right now on Twitch, streaming to you guys, and I love posting my videos to YouTube, and those things work really well for me. And, and you know, I also have like a Tumblr or whatever where I post gifts and things like that. So, anyways, I decided from day one I'm gonna start building a following for Songbringer, and it worked. And the whole point was, okay, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try and create. Uh, a prototype game in like three to six months I want to create a prototype living off savings and just like barely anything and um, and if that prototype succeeds with the Kickstarter then I'll continue making Songbringer and luckily the Kickstarter succeeded and the Kickstarter got all this press attention and the Kickstarter attracted attention from publishers and a publisher contacted me then and um, we're working together now. Their names are Double Eleven, and they're amazing. They're helping me bring it to PlayStation and consoles, and doing Q and A and design and everything. Man, they're amazing. They're helping me get to like all these um, E3s and GDCs and PAXs and stuff like that. All these expos. Oh yeah, yeah, Lime Studio. Yeah, Liam. Yeah, I like Twitter. And what's what another cool thing about Twitter is there's a lot of other game developers using Twitter right now. So there's a really cool you can get into like Twitter and just like follow some people you're interested in, just be a genuine person and basically have a good time actually on Twitter, like sharing what you're working on and like liking what other people are working on and stuff. Because there's so much cool pixel art and like game dev stuff going around on Twitter right now. So yeah, I hope that helps out a lot. That's like from a from an indie perspective, like as a single person, what can you do to build a following for what you're creating? And that, that doesn't mean it has to be a video game. This works for pretty much anything these days, you know? As long as you're doing something each day to share that with other people, you will you will build a following. Somebody out there has some a similar aesthetic to what you have. 
and they will probably like what you like. And so just make what you like. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't think any Kickstarter is going to be a matter of luck either. And that's what I was trying to say was it's important to build up a following for the Kickstarter, right? Because you cannot depend on Kickstarter to send you traffic, right? If you're depending on Kickstarter to send you traffic, your idea is quite flawed because you might not get that traffic because the way things work on the internet and stuff like that with Kickstarter and all those things is if you can send the traffic, then they'll be like, oh, hey, this one looks, this this project right here, it looks like it's might be doing well. So Kickstarter sends you more attention, you know, more traffic. And that's kind of works that way with a lot of things like social media and stuff like that. So that's why it's important to build up that genuine following um, before you do a Kickstarter and before you try and release a video game. You know what I mean? You got to drive your own traffic. Cool. Okay, so next thing, she's fat. Oh yeah, she's speedy. Okay, let's turn that to, man, 2.0 is crazy a lot. I'm thinking speed like 1.5. Let's test that out one more time. Okay, yeah, she's back at her normal speed now. It takes a minute to get her down to health. Even cheating takes a while to get her health down to 25%. There we go, okay, so now she should be faster. Still should only she should never really spam bombs because she's got at least like a 15 second delay before she can use bombs again. Yeah, she's faster now. Cool. Right, cool. She can like approach a lot faster now. Okay, good. Um, last thing I think on the list was to make her get a new attack. Um, this is I don't want this to take too long. So I'm gonna try and think of a simple way to do this. This is kind of a cool idea though. Add an attack phase where she has duplicate attacks alongside her, like duplicate copies of herself, I'm thinking. And it's up to the player to guess which is the correct one. Duplicates don't take damage or, or deal it. Okay, so how to make that fun and cool without taking too long because that could take forever. I could spend all day just on that if um, if I'm not careful. So Actually, one of the simplest ways to do that would be to just create a separate animation where she had a copies of herself attacking. So the animation itself would have two copies of herself or three or four. Oh, I think she's in bosses. No, not in bosses. Oh, maybe she's Kusanagi. Oh, there we go. Kusanagi. Cloak, die, hurt, all these. Let's get all these open. Don't know which one I might need or not. Oh, man. I should have had this open the whole time. Anyways, visible. What do we want? Not visible. 
not steel, melee. This is a cool animation, but it's only east-west. Okay, if we're gonna have duplicates of her, Yeah, the easiest thing to do is to just make this three times as wide and have her attack from both sides so you can't really tell where she's coming from. Which means that every single one of these canvases for her animations and stuff needs to be three times as wide so it doesn't mess up the sprite's content size. So this needs to be 104 plus 52 is like 156. Oh, but not image size, canvas size. 156, right? Yeah. And then keep it in the center. Good. Okay, so we can just re-render re all this stuff. Yeah, see, that's what I'm just, I was just talking about. It was like, okay, I could spend all day working on this if I, if I create it too complex, right? If I create some minor enemies and some a different entity to control, like this is gonna get complex fast. And I'm that might make it more interesting, but I don't have that much time to spend on this because I've got tons of other bugs to fix this weekend and get a release out. Um, so, I, first of all, I have to try this easy path this quick path to see if this is going to be fun or not because uh, if I start making it complex right away it'll take too much time All right, I think she's rendered a shadow Okay, so I'm just re-rendering all her sprites bigger. So there's more room to do these, these kind of double effects. Oh, no worries, no worries. This is, this is probably the way to make it the coolest and the best long term, but like, I gotta try this easier approach first to see if this could be viable and, and fun before sinking too much time. Okay, so I rendered all those bigger. 
And I'm gonna make a melee two, where she's kind of got a double here. So each one of these frames in this melee two This is kind of a crazy, gritty, dirty animation, but it happens so fast that you don't even like, can't even tell. Look how crappy this is. I love it. I love it. Okay, now let's just double up all this, flip it over. And she needs to be exactly 52 pixels to the right. All right, let's see that. So it out to throw this in the game to see if this actually feels like a double or not. Like as a player, will this actually confuse me? It probably would because I wouldn't know whether she's on the left or the right, and she she's hitting me and go. I'm like, okay, which way do I attack back to attack her? You know, do I go to the left or do I go to the right? So is that enough? This very simple concept, if this is enough to make this fight seem more fun, if this is actually seems cooler, let's see what happens. Um, oh, not safe for web. Render this as a, that. And then we need a melee animation. Really double. Actually, we'll just call this one double. Really two. Okay, now when she's doing her melee attack, is it melee or melee? Or melee? I don't even know. Here we go. Animate melee. I'm just gonna keep on calling it melee. You know what? I'm looking it up. I'm curious now. Oh, melee, melee, sort of, melee, 
So is the accent Malay? Malay? Is it Malay or Malay? <laughs> ah. Animate Malay. Malay. Can't pronounce any of this stuff. Oh, wait, wait. Um, now we're going to do a select sequence. If rand is less than a half, we're going to animate melee two. No, double. Otherwise, animate melee. Ask the Google woman. Ask the nice lady. What does she think? Melee. 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 But that's not exactly what the Stack Overflow said. Oh well. Melee it is. Alright, so there's a random 50% chance that she's going to use this double animation when she attacks melee style. So let's see if that kind of gives the feeling that she has doubles without actually creating doubles just yet. where she is is solely like ruining it. Actually that cool so I think it is time to go into phase two and to create this the more complex way creating a separate entity to manage her duplicates which means I probably should roll back all that art so there's less of a change okay I'm gonna close all these I'm gonna copy them though. Ross Bright Shadow Kusanagi Star PSD. Let's copy it somewhere. And So just clean up these files. Okay, now we're back to whoops. All right, now we're back to the where we were. Just 
just changed her health. Oh, she doesn't need that double animation anymore. Health, and she's got this. Oh, she doesn't need that double animation there either. Okay. All right. Now we're going to need to copy her entire entity to her, like a thief boss double. And write an AI for it. Oops. Let's get out here and remake C tag so it's got this file. Hopefully we can get these guys, these doubles of her to um also have um footprints I think it's good possible okay let's get her to spawn some sometimes when should she spawn these I guess maybe when she gets down to like a certain percentage of her hit points down And probably before she starts bombing, I would think, would be a good place to do this. All right, now she's in mode zero, target's far enough away. What if it only spawns if the battle is taking too long? There's no way I, of the AI knows how long the battle is taking. And besides, it's kind of subjective. I think there's a way to do that though naturally by making it based on her hit points, you know, and I think this will work fine. In fact, it's it's okay if this happens even at the very beginning, right? This is this could happen anytime for her to like produce a duplicate. The duplicate doesn't hurt you as a player, it only just kind of confuses you. So I think we're okay here. Not if invincible, if target's far enough away, if timer is less than zero, target's any, if count, thief, boss, double, is zero. So there's none other of them. Spawn one. And that's it. Probably want to set dirt on path none, delay one or two. Okay, that should do it. Just to get it started, right? Oh, and also it should be based on hit points. So if hit points is less than 75%. So there, it just it won't happen in the very beginning of the fight. In fact, we can make this 80%. So the first, ah, uh, maybe even 90. She has 350 hit points, so you're getting her down by 35. Yeah, this is fine. So 10% of her hit points can go by, and then this attack will be enabled. So at the very beginning, she's not going to do this because it would kind of be confusing. This is, this is probably going to make the fight more difficult, so maybe this should even be like 0.8. So the first 20% of her hit points, she can't do this double attack. Now let's just make a quick... Thief boss double. 
not a boss. Two points. Well, she's invincible. So she'll just have instant recharge. Oh, wait. Nope. She does kind of need to have a bunch of hit points. Yeah, because she'll go off based on a timer. So, like, after 30 seconds or so, this thief boss double will just, like, poof. Maybe 15 seconds. She's got a category and is static, though. She needs to seem like she can be attacked. Mask, mask, yep. Same mask, same mass, same size. Same footstep duration. Flags, footprints, yeah, that kind of stuff. Okay, so it looks like she we can have her have footprints as well. Melee. She should have no attack component. No dialogue component. Same animations. Same sounds, so it seems like you're hurting her. No boss roar, but in her initial mode, if timer begin, she needs to set like a timer. Timer, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. And when the timer goes off, She'll die. And she should always be cloaked. So she doesn't need any of this cloaking or magic or bombs. She only does her melee attack. except for the attack part. So she's just going to animate her melee. She's got Pathfind, Stop, Bounce, Update Target, Follow Path, or Ditch Path. And then she needs her final thing. If timer is less than zero, remove. Okay, now need to check anything else that might be using timer. Okay, so bounce, we don't want to reset the timer ever, nor ditch path. Both those things don't reset her timer so that she's just got one timer that's set to 30 seconds at the very beginning. And then that's controlling how she dies automatically after 30 seconds. Let's set that to 20 seconds, actually. All right, let's try this, try this out, see what happens. Hopefully she spawns this double. The double lasts for about 20 seconds. And then it takes her a while until she can spawn another one. That would be the ideal situation, I can imagine. Hopefully it looks right, doesn't crash. All that stuff, too.
bombs a lot, but I haven't seen her do this duplicate yet. Unless she did it already. And there's a thief boss double already here. So she, I never saw her do double A. We need to kind of keep those. If mode zero, if Rand, that's the same chances for the for getting the bomb A. So that should be getting past those first little bits. Turn on path on delay one two. Let's see what happens this time with less predicates. It's definitely below the threshold. Double! There we go, she's got a double! The double's just standing there! Why? What's wrong with you, double? Oh, because she starts like that, she needs to go into cloak mode. She's shy, right? Okay, I think this is not cloaked. So cloak means if mode 10... Yeah, alright, so at the very beginning she cloaks, that's right. If mode 10, select not a provincial rand, turn on path on face south, special smoke, animate cloak. Mode 11. If mode 11, set a target, path, back to mode 0. But set a target as well. So she needs a target, and I think she needs animate cloak. Whoa. Whoa. 
Duh, there, is that it? Yeah, there's two of them! Oh, but she's just standing there after getting hit. Uh, what's wrong with you? That was kind of cool for a second. Alright. She just, like, stands there after she gets hit. Like, like it's no big deal. Oh, I should have looked at its mode. Damn it. Hmm. What was it probably doing? Oh, this is it. It's going to mode 20 and ditch path. What the heck is mode 20 supposed to be? Oh, it goes straight into bombs. Oh. Oh, is that why it's, she does... That might be why she's doing bombs too much. So she can only ditches her path if timer is less than zero. Because mode 20 is straight into bombs, like not even considering. Oh, no, wait. If mode 20. Yeah, see, mode 20 can go straight into bomb Z. Okay, so I think if that should be if timer is less than zero. All right, now back to their spawn part. Let's make sure that there's no, never two of them. She can do that pretty much any time. Okay. So hopefully this time, the double doesn't get, like, stuck after hitting, after being hit, I mean. Oh, it's so cool. Which one's her? Which one's her? This is pretty neat. What happened to the, well, what are you doing up there? Mealy B, you're just sticking in the top right corner? Mealy B. Mealy B, stuck in Mealy B like crazy. Because her timer had a, she had a huge, oh, the timer was already, but she was in mode 10. Okay, why were you stuck in mode 10? What is mode 10 anyways? Oh, when mode's, when it's done? Aha, here's the problem. You're not supposed to go into mode 10 ever. After meleeing, you're supposed to go straight into this, so. You know what? This definitely made this fight already so much more interesting.
becomes visible sometimes. She shouldn't ever really become visible. Only like attack you or seem like she attacks you. So I think something's making her visible, or maybe she's just playing idle. Oh, she, I think she needs cloak. Skin cloak. There we go. And I think I just saw that when she died, she spit out some blood. She's not supposed to. There it is. This is on foe death. Yeah, yeah. So when a foe dies, another time where area pattern is not equal to K pattern sphere one. So no blood at all on this screen. And now we've got the option of leaving her dead body on the ground for the double or Making the dead, maybe making the double not have a dead body. Uh, at first, I'm going to keep the dead body and see what ha see what happens. If maybe like, like there's a ton of dead bodies on the screen. What's up, man? I think this is almost done. I'm surprised! I thought this would take longer, but uh, yeah, Kusanagi might be finished already. All right, so this time, I guess I do need to keep on the debug mode for a little bit longer. Progression. How you been, Mount? She couldn't find me because I was standing on the stairs. Yeah, I'm great, man. I'm great. I had a really fun week. I was on the PC Gamer um, show with uh, Tom and Wes for PC Gamer. That was really cool. Be part of their like podcast slash live stream, talking about games in the Steam sale, and we got to play Songbringer and. Um, that was cool. Yes, she's working now. The double is looking sweet. And now it's like, which one is she? This one's still chasing me. That one's bombing me. There we go. Okay, cool. Killed her. That time there was no blood, too. That was really good. But there's still a dead body. I think it's okay to leave the dead body, actually. This boss requires a lot of a lot of health. She's like incredibly damaging, and so it's good that this it's good that she has about 15% less health now because 
Otherwise, this fight can just go on forever, especially now with her two her little tricks she's got now. The double and the, uh, the extra speed, that kind of stuff. And good, she's not really doing her double too often. In fact, I think she should maybe be able to do her double. And it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. Um... How, t how far away the target is. So you can be any distance away from her, and if she, if, she if, the, if any of these things trigger, right, then the rands and all that, yeah. Just let her do that. Let's try that out now. And this time, we'll use no render verbosity. So it's like fighting her for realsies. Computer's overheating here. It's like, Rrrr. Limits fan. Probably because... What the heck's going on? Oh. That was just... <laughs> that was sitting there running the whole time? That's why the computer is eating up its CPU. Trying to compile the internet again, you know? I do it, I do it all the time. But whoops! Whoops. What happened to render verbosity? Oh, it's supposed to be zero. All right, let's do this. Fighting her for realsies this time. Wow, I don't have any kill bombs. Ran out of kill bombs. Oh, now they're not equipped. I'm not going to use any cheats at all, so I can kind of feel out what this boss fight's like. See how fun this really is. With this. Oh, cool. Oh, that was her magic. No, that was actually her double. Uh, which one is she? Oh, that's, that is pretty sweet. Okay, maybe that, that actually should be when her hit points are even lower, because I got her down pretty fast to 20% there. But which one is she? Oh, I got a double attack. I don't even know who killed me there. Yes, okay, that makes her a lot more difficult to fight. So let's put that down to 50% even. Maybe 60. Yeah, yeah, more like 50. Okay, there you go. When she's in her lower hit points, when she's halfway dead, then this thief boss double can spawn. I know, I do, right? <laughs> I do, actually. I'm not that great at Songbringer. I guess if I... It's kind of one of those games where you really have to focus there for a second. If you're, if you're in the heat of battle, like, you really got to focus and, like, put everything you have into dodging and or attacking just the right way to defeat the boss you're currently fighting. Oops. Is this... Okay, no, I wasn't able to... Let's do this. I got you, Thief Boss. I know I don't have all the weapons that I need to fight you right now, but... Oh, wait, do I? Do I have at least the chip? Okay, I have the chip. That's pretty important to fighting her. Because you need to make the damage you do count. Sometimes you don't know whether you're hitting her or not.
Oh, right. Patience? Yeah. Right, yeah, when you rush. I guess that's good. That's good that the game is giving you that. I don't know, it's like stop and smell the roses type encouragement. It is a lot about exploration, you know? Finding your way, going wherever you want. Oh, that was her double! That means she must be at 50% health. What's up, Spud Gunnis Maximus? Yeah, man, how you been? Okay, there we go. That wasn't that hard. That was a lot easier than last time I fought her. Okay, maybe maybe her hit points shouldn't be that much lower than. Oh, maybe... What what made her so much easier that time, felt like? I guess, yeah, let's not... Let's compromise this, sort of, and make that 88 hit points instead of 85. That really didn't change her that much. Let's look at the... I'm going to review everything that's changed here. She went from HP 899 to 88. She's got this double sequence where she can spawn a copy of herself. But that doesn't happen too often. I fought the entire battle and only encountered one of her doubles. So I guess that's okay. Thanks, man. Um... I could play with these RAND numbers if I wanted to increase the the amount of doubles she produces. Yeah, let's try a slight tweak. I don't want to. I don't want this on my soul to remember to think like, hey, should I have increased that number a little bit? Let's make this 0.75 and this one two. See if we get more of the doubles, but not too many. In fact, there can only be one double at a time, so. Oh. Wait, so you can start this fight meditating? Oh, this is kind of an exploit. But there's really no way to defeat her if you're sitting here meditating. So I'm invulnerable, but she is not being damaged at all. Even if I had Vel, Vel can't target this boss. Because she's invisible. That's the secret right there, you gotta hit her a lot. It's hard to hit her because she's invisible, but if you can find her somehow and hit her a lot... Whoa, I'm almost dead! See that? I almost died that fast! This boss is hard. Okay, I want to see more doubles. Oh, probably because she also had only 50%. She can only do it at 50% health. She's got a copy of herself now. Which one is she? I don't know. There, okay, I killed her copy. Oh, 
She doesn't want to copy? Sweet. Okay, I like this a lot better. Just having that slight change to how frequent she creates her double. It makes it so she kind of has a double no matter, not no matter what, but it's pretty relatively fast that she creates a double if she doesn't have one. Oh, is that her copy I'm attacking? Okay, I don't know. But cool. Very cool. Much like, just having that one little trick in that, in that boss fight was a really rad idea. Good suggestion, Tom. Okay, so we're out. Exit game. Cool. Like this. Checking it in, man. Yes! I can't believe that whole Thief boss improvement got done in one live stream man that's awesome let's check this in and that's gonna be it for the stream yeah hopefully it makes this boss more fun actually you know the boss fight shouldn't drag on quite as long it's about she's about 10 percent less hit points and she's got these cool new tricks which make it more fun so just to review hit points the double attack the bigger timer between her her bomb attacks and she can be faster when she's at low health and oh yeah no blood yeah okay so we're checking in input system health system area creation and eat boss and eat boss double All right, well, there you go. That's gonna be it for this stream. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you all. Hope you all have a nice Saturday. Buying Steam games and stuff, that was fun. Chatting, chatting about that at the beginning of the stream. I got two games I definitely wanna buy. Well, Hollow Knight for sure. One game I definitely wanna buy. All right, guys, well, I appreciate you all. Hope you have a nice day, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Thanks a lot for watching again.